When I think of how he came so far from glory, came and dwelt among the lowly, such as I. To suffer shame and such disgrace On Mount Calvary he took my place Then I ask myself this question Who am I? And I bore. Who am I that he would pray? Not my will, thine fall. The answer I may never know. Why he ever? So that to an old rugged cross he'd go. For who am I? When I'm reminded of his words I'll leave you never just be true I'll give to you a life forever I wonder what I could have done only son fight my battles until they're won for who am I who am I that a king would bleed and die Not my will, thine fall. The answer I may never know why he ever loves me so that to an old rugged cross he'd go. An old rugged cross he would go to an old rugged cross he go for who am I? Won't you stand with us now as we sing Pass It On?
This morning, that uh, that's this slide is the uh, guitar and mandolin praise band at the First Baptist Church, uh, Battelle in Baco, Romania, uh, doing their special music on uh, on uh, Easter Sunday on the evening service. So uh, it was always a joy, and I wanted to share that with you. But from where I was sitting, uh, from where I was sitting that, that evening, there was uh, some other special music, but all I got was the back of them. And uh, it was a full house, and, uh, but it was, it, was a, it was a good time. Um, this morning in the, opening, in the opening song, when Brother Mike had page one of one song and page two of another song, uh, reminded me of the, the times there in Romania when uh, they will be singing, and it's a very familiar tune, and as you start to sing along with what you think is the song, somebody will look at you who speaks English and goes, those aren't the words. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, it, it's... Uh, it's uh, a common thing, apparently. Uh, but uh, I want to thank you uh, before I have opportunity to forget for your 
uh, continued prayers as you lifted not only uh, me but the team up uh, while we were traveling. It was uh, a little bit different trip. Uh, and I have to say, uh, maybe for the first time, how glad I am to be home. Uh, it's always good to be home, but usually there's always some regret about, about leaving and not so much this time. Some of that can just be left behind. Uh, but some of you have already know this story. I've, uh, I first came to uh, volunteer in missions in uh, uh, 1998. Uh, when uh, Don Samples was the pastor here and he was going to go to Ethiopia and, and myself and George and uh, Ken Cheney and a couple of others were, were going to go along. Uh, it was just like the uh, hearing from Isaiah, who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. And for whatever the reason, that trip never materialized. So a couple of years later, uh, albeit unwillingly, I agreed to go to uh, Romania for the first time. Is, is that loud or is it just me echoing in my, in my hearing aids? There we go. Whew. Now you probably can't hear me. But oh, can you? Okay. Uh, I can't hear myself, so that's a, that's a blessing that we'll write down for the day. But Alan kept after me to join the, the, the uh, associational team that goes to Romania, and, and uh, I finally went. And you know, once, as I've told you many times before, once I was getting ready to go, I started having second thoughts. But uh, thankfully, I went, and it was a life-changing event to me, and or for me, and it was where I found my call to ministry, uh, sharing hope to a people that seemingly have no po hope, and that's the the Roma or the Gypsy people go group. Uh, and the reason I go is that, uh, as it says in Isaiah 6, 1, that I'm confident that I've been called to this ministry and that we have been successful, uh, I believe, because uh, the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on us as a team and uh, to bring good news to the poor, and that poor being the Roma people. Uh, as I was looking over pictures and notes and whatnot, uh, I came across... Uh, Acts chapter uh, 9, verse 15. And it's there that uh, Ananias was uh, called upon by the Lord to go and, and give instruction to Saul. And uh, Ananias was kind of like me, you have to be out of your mind. You want me to go where? Uh, but it says that, uh, in verse 15, but the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles, or in this case the Roma, the kings and the children of Israel. From time to time we have opportunity because of who we are, uh, even though they think it's a big deal, we kind of think we're nobody special, to sit down with government officials to try to get uh, permission, uh, permits and whatnot to... Um, start churches, build churches, and uh, we have an opportunity to interact, and apparently our being there carries some weight. Uh, every year, when we first get to Romania, we go to uh, Bucharest, uh, into uh, the uh, Institute of Theological Baptist, the Baptist Seminary. Um, many of the instructors are Southern Baptist uh, professors from some of our universities. Some of our missionaries work there, although we do not have a Southern Baptist present in Romania at the current time. That little white van you see there is our lifeline. Uh, that is uh, Moses's, Mose Marin's van that uh, we put some money into last year because we need him to get us from point A to point B and to the airport at three o'clock in the morning. Uh, but that's our base of operations there when we're working in, in Bucharest. So, a uh, little bit of an unusual trip this year. Originally, we were going to go over. Uh, we usually go in September. We changed it to April so that Al and Ray could go help work on a uh, parsonage in the village of Satineau. Uh So we joined up with the Ellises from, from Texas uh, again and, and, uh, for this April trip. Um, so Wednesday morning, uh, Costell came down from Prejoria, picked up Al and Ray, and they went and they, they bought a sound system that you'll see later. They went on up to, uh, uh, to Onest uh, because they didn't have their permits to start building on the parsonage. 
but they got to Prejoria, which is just down the road there a little bit from where Costell lives, and uh, they found a roofing project they had to do. The church there at Prejoria, the roof material they put on it was substandard, it hadn't been painted, and it was deteriorating and, and it was leaking, so they found something to do for the two days. Um, so Wednesday morning, uh, after Al got his luggage, I forgot to mention that, he had one stop. He flew from Orlando to Munich to Bucharest, and his luggage did not. Uh, but it arrived in time for him to leave for, for a nest with, uh, with Costell, so it wasn't too terribly bad. But uh, so the uh, Ellis's and I traveled out to a little town called Frateste, and I made a new friend who obviously was not very impressed with my friendship. Uh, after an exchange of smiles, this picture was taken, and she got up and went over and crawled on her mother's lap and promptly fell asleep. <laughs> Happens a lot. I, I don't understand that. Uh, but then w there was like, we couldn't count them. They kept moving. There was like 46 kids in this, this little room. And uh, Brother Tim brought a, a, uh, a uh, Bible lesson. You can see they were impressed with that. Uh, with, the, with the Roma, you have to keep it short, you have to keep it concise, uh, because you can just see a glaze over, and they're done. Uh, but what they really looked forward to was craft time. And uh, they did far better with the craft than some of us adults did who was trying to help them. Uh, but they were impressed with it. They got to make little pinwheels, and uh, the lesson was on the Holy Spirit and how you can't see it and you can't see the wind, but the, the wind will blow the, the pinwheel. So they were impressed with that. Following uh, that meeting, we ran to a neighboring town for, for lunch. And, uh, Brother Cornell, who, who was our driver and, and our, our contact this time since Moses was having treatments for his, his cancer, took us to what we could be considered an upscale restaurant and they brought the food and it was uh, great proportion or great portions of food. But uh, the pastor, this little fellow here, jumps up, uh, the, Brenda was the second to get a massage. He gives Tim, starts massaging his hands and his ears and pulls his hat and his glasses off, massages him, then he goes to Brenda. And it was kind of humorous to watch the waiters go by and go, what are they <laughs> And I thought it was hilarious till he came around the table and started on me. <laughs> but uh, uh, we went back to for test and had a ladies conference. Brenda shared her, his, her testimony uh, with those uh, dear ladies who, who gathered around her for a photo op and, and the accordion player decided he wanted in on the picture too. But this is Pastor uh, Bersha Balarica and his family. Uh, unusual story, I may have shared it with you last year. Uh, he had had cancer. Uh, his family was in disarray. He and his wife were separating. And he came across uh, Pastor Cornell and witnessed to him and he was saved and uh, felt God's call upon his life to, to, uh, to be a pastor. Uh, to lead others to Christ, and his family reunited, and uh, they built a room on the, the back of his house uh, for the purpose of holding church meetings there. All of the stuff was by donated materials, and they built this room, and you know they, they had 46, 45, 46 kids there in the morning a couple of days a week. And there's kind of some of the homes that you see that the Roma live in. Apparently it was laundry day. Uh, and we went back to the park. I went back to Bucharest that evening, walked to supper, and it being Easter, uh, this was how they had the, the park decorated. Uh, I believe it's, uh, that it's the, the words there say Happy Easter, uh, but that was rather unique. Thursday we went out with, with Pastor uh, Cornell, this fellow here. Um, he, uh, that's his house off to the right. Uh, it's his church and uh, we did some of the same. We did a kid's lesson and, and, the, uh, and, and the craft. And Pastor Cornell really kind of got into the building of the craft himself. But uh, he, he uh, the kids enjoyed it. 
he has a, a couple of kids that have a genetic disorder that he, in fact, their, their muscles kind of constrict and, and it, one of their boys is having probably, I think, surgery this week for that. Of course, after the time with the kids, we went for lunch. You, you can't not have lunch, you know. Uh, and then we went out to a small town called Lecce Vecchi uh, on Thursday afternoon and met outside. Uh, the people that live in, the, in that house donated this piece of land uh, and they're looking to build a, a building on it. Uh, for the summer, Cornell has acquired some tents and they're gonna set them up and they're gonna hold, hold church in the, in the, in the tents. And we did crafts with them as well and the adults, the Roma adults got into it as much as, as the kids did. Uh, also, uh, we had indicated to you last year that they were requesting Bibles in their language. And uh, because of your generosity, we were able to buy six cases of Bibles in the Romanian language, and here's a, some pictures of them passing them out. On the left is at Fratest, and on the right is at the church in uh, Cola, Colon, Colonia, Colina, something like that. that uh, on Friday was a travel day. Uh, Brenda and Tim traveled by car and all the luggage, and I traveled by train. It was like flying six hours on a regional jet. Not thinking about it being Easter, everybody was going home. Uh, but Sunday morning was Easter Sunday in Romania by the Orthodox calendar, and I had my choice of going a couple of different places and just thought, oh, why not? Maybe I'll go to Satano. Uh, Satano is probably my favorite place in all of Romania, and uh, uh, well, let me back up just a tad. There's no pictures of it. But uh, on Saturday, uh, we traveled on Friday. On Saturday, we we're at Pastor John's home. And we said, you know, what's the schedule? And they said, well, Saturdays, uh, Easter Saturday, if you will, uh, Jesus was in the grave, so we'll not have any activity. And we said, okay. But uh, a couple of hours later, that all changed, and we went out to Pretoria for a youth meeting. And uh, they wanted us all to speak, and, and you know, I, I kind of indicated to them I wasn't quite sure why they had old men in varying stages of hair loss trying to speak to the youth. But hopefully uh, they would benefit with some of the wisdom that we were able to share with them. Saturday was also the first day I had uh, the first medical problem, I broke a tooth. And, uh, but the good news was I was able to secure a dental appointment for Wednesday to get it fixed. Albeit a little nervous about that. Uh, but Easter Sunday, out to Satano, we get out there and, uh, uh, for Sunday morning service. And <coughs> on the left you'll see Elvis. Yes, Elvis is alive and well and living in Satano. And he brought the Sunday school lesson. Uh, Elvis is really his name. Uh, and on the right is Pastor Simon. And it was a full house that day. Uh, You'll see uh, the music off to the right. It's not real clear, but we had a, a guitarist, a violinist, and a celloist, which was kind of neat. Um, and then the children, when we walked in, I walked in through the children's department, and there was maybe six kids in there. Being true Baptist, church started, and all the kids came in. And on the left was the kids coming out and, and uh, sharing <laughs> and song and, and, and uh, reciting of scripture. And then uh, uh, another shot of, of the children singing and being accompanied. Um, you can't really see the celloist over there. You just kind of see her arm stuck out. Uh, but this young lady, uh, they're sisters. And the fellow on the guitar is a boyfriend of the violinist. And then there's a special music by a group of, I don't know if they were from another church or part of that church. But if they were on a traveling road show, they need to sell their bus. They, uh, some people should sing, some people should not. I'll leave the rest of that to your imagination. Remember this little girl from two years ago? She was the photo bomber. I pulled up my camera and she showed me her big smile with no teeth. But she's still there. She's all grown up now. She's 10 years old. 
uh, the girl with her arm around her is a celloist who, by the way, was saved at Satano. Um, their family is, I get the impression, are well-to-do. Uh, in fact, her parents were there as well. But uh, she was saved there. Within a couple of weeks, she was working with the children uh, and sat to know every week, going out with Simon and Ona Andronic. And uh, she's currently studying music at the university in Bucharest. And she sets money aside every so often to go towards the children's program in Bucharest or in, in Satano. Uh, and at, when the children got all done, they brought them all back inside. And, I'm pretty sure it was her who provided them little bags of, of treats that they weren't sharing with anybody. <coughs> Satano, as I've said, is a very special place to me, you, uh, for, to me uh, and by extension to you. And as you read in Matthew 25, verse 40, it says, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of these, the least of these you did uh, for, least of these brothers of mine you did for me. And several years ago when I took a peek in somebody's cooking pot and saw chicken bones being cooked with an old diced up tomato, um, I made it a point of trying to raise funds uh, to provide food stables for uh, the people, of as many people as we could, primarily here in, in Satineau. And, uh, each year, $25 feeds the family. Uh, we're feeding roughly uh, 85 families, and we give them cooking oil and flour and rice and sugar and potatoes. And uh, uh, Orville Baptist provided the funds for that this year as well. Uh, and here's some of the recipients of that. Uh, these guys, you got to love them. Uh, uh, you know, the old and, and, and the young alike. So, uh, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's always a blessing, and each year I'm told that uh, during prayer time, someone is constantly, uh, someone always raises up the idea of the gift, praising God for the gift, and thanking Him uh, for you, the giver. Uh, after, after church, we went to the home of the Andronics, uh, Felicia on, and, and uh, uh, Mercia. Uh, Felicia is now bedridden, unable to communicate, and needs 24/7 care. And uh, it was kind of a kind of a humorous story. We were on our way out to uh, to Satano, and, and they get a phone call. It's their brother who is staying with with his mother, and he's supposed to be giving her a medication. And they said, "Well, on the medicine." And Simon, who was driving, said. I forgot to lay out the medicine. So that's all in this box. <clears throat> and apparently Marcel opened the box and you know, we had 52 pickup. And so he's on the phone in a panic saying, what color pills do I give mom now? So they, they worked through that. But uh, we went to their home, we had lunch. Um, and uh, bless her heart, Ona uh, cooked the meal, and uh, we the, the 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 meal of the day was was soup and uh, sarmale, which we would call pigs in the blanket or cabbage rolls or what have you. And she said she was not a very she apologized profusely that she was not a very good cook. She was not being humble. We'll we'll leave it at that. <clears throat> Uh, you're not eating very much. No, I'm having a little bit of a stomach problem here. We're just going to, yeah. So after a nap, we, uh, we, made, uh, we made our way to uh, the Baco Church where the, the mandolins played and uh, the adult choir gave a cantata and the youth gave a cantata and there's a couple other special, uh, special music. Uh, that morning, uh, Brother Alan Seidel, he'd gone up, up north to, to Bahush uh, and joined uh, me and, and, and uh, Baco on Sunday evening. Ray and the Ellis's were in, in, in our nest that Sunday morning. <laughs> but uh, uh, it was a good service. Uh, they had Ray, no, Ray wasn't there. They had Alan speak, and then they had me speak, and then they had all the music in between, <clears throat> and they wrapped up the service at 9 o'clock with the Lord's Supper. 
And then they didn't go home. They stood around and talked. Uh, we finally went to eat our evening meal about 9.30 before traveling home. Monday was what they call Easter Monday, and it was also Zydel Fest. Alan Zydel was from Romania, and Alan's family, uh, he found them in Baco. That's Lucian on, the, on your far left, and his daughter, Laura. And the other young man is his son, Andre, and uh, Lucian's mother, which would be a cousin to uh, Alan's uh, father, I guess, grandfather. <coughs> so um, they all got together, and of course you had to have Zydel Fest. Uh, you, you can't go to Romania without having Zydel Fest. And uh, we did get them to only load up the grill one time this year instead of twice. Uh, but Tuesday we had an associational meeting. Uh, typically when we go in the fall, when our group from Ohio goes in the fall, they don't have an association meeting. Uh, but in, in April, uh, they do. And at these meetings in years past, Tim would speak and the rest of us would sit in the back and be bored, you know, because basically uh, study. Uh, and five minutes after we sat down there, they said, oh, you're speaking to the, to the group too. I'm going, it would have been nice to know this yesterday, you know, or even at breakfast. But uh, so I got up to speak. <coughs> the, the gentleman beside me uh, translating is the pastor from Pietra Niem. Uh, and he's kind of laughing because I told him, I don't normally speak at these meetings. I'm usually sitting in the back with my Bible open and taking a nap. Um, I'm not supposed to speak at these things. Uh, but the uh, Lord gave me a brief bit of encouragement and, uh, that I was able to, to, to share with them as well. And then we drove out to Prejoria, uh, Alan and uh, Ray uh, working on the roof. They actually had to shore up the, the trusses. They were sagging and they uh, <clears throat> were putting a metal roof on the, on the church uh, so they don't have the problems they had <clears throat> now. Uh, So that was Tuesday afternoon, and I'm walking around with a coat on and shivering, and anyone who knows me knows I break sweat at 20 below. Uh, so I ended up, <coughs> excuse me, I ended up in bed uh, for the next three days. Uh, Montezuma's revenge is not only in Mexico. It also, uh, he also has issues with uh, Eastern Europe, uh, and consequently, I had to cancel my dental appointment because of the other issue that was going on. So uh, I was out of commission till about Friday afternoon, and I was going stir crazy. So we went out to. Uh, in the meantime, the Ellises <coughs> and uh, and Ray and Al went to Prejoria and Onest and had services on those evenings when when I was not. So we went back out to Doftiana on Friday and uh, had a service there. There was about five churches represented uh, there and, and they've made some improvements to the, the building since we were there last year. And we visited in a few of the homes. The one on the right, uh, you see Brother Tim going into, there's about four families that live in that house. And the room that we visited in was, was very, very small. Uh, I mean, it was, small. Uh, a couch, a little bed, a uh, small table, refrigerator, and stove <laughs> was about all that was in there. Uh, that gentleman had passed away over the winter, and uh, the wife was living in that portion by herself. A couple of more homes there. But this lady standing by, Pastor John, this lady here, uh, her family donated, uh, she, uh, donated the land that the church at Dorftown is on. Uh, and at that service, uh, Brother Ray sang, of course, and uh, Alan and I were both supposed to speak, and Alan gets up and speaks from the passage that I was going to preach from. And I'm going, you've got to be kidding me. Uh, so we switched gears, and I, I spoke briefly, and used the excuse primarily that I still was a little under the weather. Uh, <clears throat> But Saturday up in Pietra Nim, there was a Church Starts International Women's Conference. 
that they uh, wanted us to attend. And uh, uh, the church there was built by a church out of Florence, uh, South Carolina, I believe. And uh, they built this massive three, four story structure that I can only think, what were they thinking? Although they do on, on Sunday run about 200 people, uh, it's almost too big for them to keep maintained. But uh, it's a beautiful structure, uh, well attended. But uh, Pastor Ruben, who translates for us, is now an employee with Church Starts International, welcomed them. Brenda gave her testimony. Uh, as you can see, the, the backdrop of the church is very, very beautiful. And the fellow on the right is <coughs> the Baptist Bishop of Moldova. Apparently in Europe, Baptists have bishops. Uh, but he also recorded Brother Ray as he sang and uh, was going to put him on Moldovian Christian radio. Uh, so you'll have to ask Ray for his autograph the next time you see him. He's a recording artist. Pastor John brought the, brought the prayer and, and Brother Allen, who's on the board of Church Starts International, spoke briefly. And of course, what would a Baptist gathering be without lunch, you know? Uh, Sunday, I uh, went to, uh, to, to a nest. Uh, <coughs> uh, this was about the best picture I found. But this uh, cross and globe that's lighted, that's backlit, I've seen many people try to duplicate, but only the Romanians have been able to uh, to make it look right. Uh, Pastor John carrying flowers in. They're big on flowers in the springtime. So if you have allergies and you go to Romania in the spring, you make sure you're going to be speaking. Make sure you take your allergy medicine. Uh, the uh, children, uh, of course, sing. And these kids, and I've shared it with you before, uh, this little fella in the vest, whoops, wrong one. This little fellow in the vest, he can rattle off these long passages of Scripture, and it's like, how does he do that? But I'm sitting there, and I'm watching these kids, and I watch the progression of, the, of this, the next couple of slides. They're singing away, and you see that. She pops back up. She goes back in again. She pops back out. <coughs> A little bit of entertainment for the... Uh, I brought the morning message, and it was one of those things that I knew that I was going to be preaching. Uh, and I knew I was going to be preaching in three locations that day. And so I'm thinking, okay, I can preach this message, and if I, if I play it right, I can preach the same message three times. By the time we get to the third place, the translator can just preach it, and I can sit down. <laughs> but we get to church, and the Lord impressed on me the message I had for here wasn't the message I was supposed to bring. So I had my notes with me and I, and I brought another message. But as I'm looking out over the congregation, I'm seeing people from the two churches I'm going to be going to later today. Well, there went plan A. Uh, so I get to the next church. Oh, of course you have to, you know, you, you gotta eat. Uh, a little chicken schnitzel and, 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 and potatoes uh, before going on out to Tigokna. And uh, the building was dark. This was the only really picture we got of Ray singing. Uh, and I brought a message there. The message I was going to bring, I'm going through my notebook that I carry with me. And the notes that I was going to use here are now laying back in my room in common nest. So we go to plan B. Maybe at C. Uh, and I still got another message to do. So <coughs> we kind of went into panic mode at one point. Because then we go back to Doftiana. And that's uh, Zachary, he's the associate pastor at, at Oness, and he brought a Sunday school lesson of sorts and, and prayed, and Costell brings special music, and then uh, they begged Ray to speak, and so he, uh, he brought a short message. And, and interestingly enough, Pastor John says, now you've got to speak three times, and you've got to be brief. We don't have a lot of time. So then they asked Ray to speak, and... Uh, we had an unexpected guest that showed up. If you see this guy right here, kind of looking over this way, that man is drunk out of his mind. He comes staggering in during the music and plops down. And Angela was sitting right there. 
It's not long before she moves back. Christina, she's just kind of grinning. It's not long that she moves over here. The gentleman had an odor about him. And he kept sitting there going. Mm -hmm. And then he'd look around and I'm going, I'm going to walk by him and he's going to throw up on my feet. You know, I just see that coming. Uh, so I brought a message and, and uh, he kind of sat there and he kept looking around like, where am I at? But when they got done, they got up and they went through and, and uh, Florin, he was not translating what was going on, but they all stood and they commenced to praying and he's wagging his finger at this poor guy and he's standing up going. And uh, I think they just prayed the alcohol out of him <laughs> because if you see him, if you see him there, he's pretty sober. <laughs> And it didn't last for long. As soon as we broke, he was out the door, and we never did see him again. Uh, but we made a presentation, uh, gave them some funds to, to uh, help continue with the construction of the church, and uh, went back to Common S for our evening meal. And, and uh, th this is the team getting ready to depart uh, for, for Bucharest. Our work there in, in Onest, or in, in the Bucco area finished. Here's a, just threw this in, a stork's nest. And I tried and tried and tried to get a picture of a stork standing in its nest with its little ones. And could never get my camera up in time. Uh, but they're, they're huge nests that are built on top of concrete power poles. And then all the little birds make nests in the, in the bottom of it. So uh, uh, we then, uh, our last night in, in Bucharest, we always take Dr. Morris and his wife uh, who is the rector at the, at the seminary out for, for dinner. Uh, this was an upscale restaurant in old, old Bucharest. It was kind of chilly, so we asked if we could go inside, and we had Brenda with us, so she wasn't able to do the stairs, so they accommodated us and took us in to an area that was previously closed, except on weekends, and it's a converted wine cellar. Uh, uh, excellent food, and uh, we always out of our own personal expense money, treat ourselves and Dr. Dr. Morris to a, uh, to a good meal because, you know, after all, fellas got to eat. But uh, in old Bucharest, there's an old Orthodox church that has been restored, and uh, they took years restoring it, and it's now uh, backlit uh, for all to, to see going by. There's the, the funding uh, that we had this year. We uh, distributed it to uh, a variety of causes. We bought Bibles. We uh, put uh, food staples in the hands of, of the needy. Uh, there was a sound system that was purchased for the church at Onest and did some vehicle repairs, uh, roof projects, and uh, a variety of benevolent causes. Most of them were... Uh, uh, of this construction nature this year. But uh, much of that, all of that, all of this, all of this stuff here is of this, because of the sacrificial giving of people here in the uh, Buckeye Central Erie Baptist Association. And a large part of it came from, from Orville Baptist Church. And we thank you for that. And uh, uh, it's, it's a, a great joy to be able to, to participate in, in that project. But uh, if you would, continue to, to pray for, for our team. Uh, at this point, uh, especially for the 2017, at, at this point we've not uh, scheduled a date. Uh, and, and also, uh, uh, to be real honest, when I, when I came home, uh, in fact, the day or two before we came home, my thought was, this is my last trip. I, I'm not going to do this anymore. Part of that might have been because of, of, of the stomach bug and, and everything else that went on. But as I prepared for today, I realized that it's, I feel, still feel led, still feel called to work with the Roma people. Uh, it may be that we'll need to try a different venue 
continue our work in a different area of Romania, uh, maybe hook up with Romanian uh, American ministries. But if you would uh, pray to that end, what we was, as a team will do in, in 2017 and beyond. <coughs> John Piper says this about missions. You've got three choices when it comes to missions. You can go, you can send, or you can be disobedient. And we as a church, Orville Baptist, uh, I think have, been, have done a good job of sending and even going. Uh, not just internationally, but, but locally as well. And uh, I pose this question to you. You know, are you being called to missions? Uh, is, there, is God laying it upon your heart that you need to become more involved either in sending or in going? Uh, but if you are, before you can, you first have to know him. And, and that's where it all comes down. If you're going to be a, uh, a missionary for Christ, you first have to know Christ. And uh, so I would challenge you this morning as we close out our service that if you don't know him, uh, that you take this opportunity to know him this morning. <clears throat> and if you feel led to, to missions, uh, if you'd care to make that public, you could come this morning as well. Uh, but the altar is open for any reason. If you care to, to come and pray, uh, that opportunity is open to you as well. <clears throat>